Hi, and uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to this uh, GMAT um, essay walkthrough uh, session. Uh, my name is Susan Barishai. I'm the founder of CA Admissions, a boutique admission coaching firm. And I'm really excited to be here with you today to talk about the NYU Stern MBA essays. Um, if you can just uh, take some time, uh, those of you who are live with us today, and just let us know where you're connecting from, <clears throat> excuse me, and which round are you applying to um, at NYU. Uh, that would be great to actually see where um, everyone is joining from. Um, I am in the East Coast. Um, and we have a wonderful sunny day here. I'm looking over here because I have another screen um, which has your comments. So I'm looking to see what comments are coming in. Um, but in the meantime, why don't we just get started and talk, walk through the rest uh, the essay for NYU Stern uh, because we have a lot to cover and a limited amount of time. So um, I put together a slide um, uh, just to anchor the discussion and talk uh, about the application itself, um, excuse me, the essay it's, itself. And um, uh, I will be taking questions along the way. So if you have a question about any specific area um, of the uh, NYU Stern MBA essays, uh, please write your, write, write your questions in the chat. Um, also, if you like this video, if you like the content, um, uh, please uh, hit the like button and um, comment, uh, of course, on um, what you enjoyed about the session. If you have friends who are also considering an MBA and would find this video helpful, please share, invite them to the live if they're available, but if not, share the video afterwards um, so that they can get the insights as well. So with that, let, why don't we just get started? Uh, a brief intro for those of you who are unfamiliar with me and my services. So I am the, as I mentioned earlier, the founder of C Admissions, a boutique uh, coaching firm. I have a undergraduate and graduate degree from NYU and Yale respectively. And I have been working as an admission coach for about um, eight years, um, helping young ambitious candidates gain admission to top 20 uh, MBA programs. I have a 94% placement rate, which means 94% of my clients gain admissions to at least one of their target institutions. Um, and the focus that I, uh, that um, the service that I provide is focusing on storytelling and being able to really capture what makes the individual applying unique and the perspective that they bring are unique. So um, with that, I, we are going to, um, what we're going to cover today is the um, Essay, NYU Stern essay application requirements, the essay do's and don'ts, um, sample, we have a sample that um, um, a current um, applicant has submitted uh, for live review, and then uh, there's a Q&A throughout, um, but if we have time, we'll do additional, um, we'll answer additional questions towards the end of the session as well. Um, beautiful. And I see that people are coming in from India, from Nigeria, from Brazil, amazing. I love uh, the diversity that we have here. Uh, so let's dive right in. We have a few deadlines that are coming up, including one round one in September 18th. So if you're targeting any one of these, uh, please bear in mind that you're gonna need a little bit of time to put together a strong essay. So uh, the a a NYU Stern full-time MBA application requires essentially uh, uh, three essays. You have the short answer, professional aspirations, essay one, which is change it, essay two, personal expression, or the pick six that is so infamous for NYU applications. And then there's the optional additional information essay. Um, I'm not going to cover this one because it really is about any additional information that is not included elsewhere in your application you want the admission team to uh, see. To, to, to address. So this can be your GPA, your GMAT, GRE, any one of those data points that you want to make sure the admission team is fully aware of. So with that, let's dive right into the short answer. The short answer question, uh, which is your goals question, it's very straightforward. What are your short-term career goals? And you have to answer this in 150 words. Um, so I uh, like to think of this as a like, a, what are the things that you should not do first? And what are the things instead that you should be doing? So you don't want to be vague about your goals um, or you don't want to say that you want to explore um, a career or a different career path or different sectors. 
um, and you definitely don't want to just focus on keywords. Uh, what these don't um, do is really uh, diminish the thoughtfulness that you uh, bring to the table. Uh, you want to present yourself as someone who specifically understands why you want to do an MBA. So um, why is this uh, the next step for you in your professional development? Um, you want to make your goals uniquely yours. Um, not that your goals need to be unique, but they need to be anchored on a mission that you yourself um, genuinely care about. So typically the way I go about the goals essay is, although you're only asked for your short-term goals, your short-term goals are only a data point, a step rather, um, in, in the direction of your long-term plan. So in 150 words, I would include your long-term goal, the mission that you have, your North Star, um, and then focus on the short-term career goals that you look to um, obtain post your MBA. Um, so uh, typically that's the structure in that order, reverse chronology, uh, because everything leads to the next element in the, um, uh, in the storytelling. We need to know the macro level vision, where you're looking to go to make that maximum impact, and then what's the first post-MBA goal that's going to help you get uh, to that long term and mission itself. Awesome. If there's any questions, please write your questions in the chat. Um, I think the goals are pretty straightforward, 150 words, so I won't spend a lot of time on that. Let's move to the pick six. This is um, uh, a very creative way for NYU uh, to come about um, you know, getting to know the applicants. So um, essentially, in this segment of your application, you have to choose six photos or six slides um, that are going to present who you are, that illustrate your interests, that illustrate your values, your motivations, your uh, perspectives, and your personality. Uh, people choose to be very creative in this part, in this part uh, but you don't have to be. What you don't want to present yourself as someone who is one-dimensional, however. Um, so you want to think about the you know, different uh, ways that you are, uh, that you engage, um, both on, mostly on the personal level, community level. Um, and then you want to um, write underneath each slide a one sentence um, describing, you know, why you've selected this particular image and um, what significance does it hold for you? Um, and the beginning of the slide is going to, um, is going to uh, essentially, you're going to write three sentences that introduce, give an overview of your pick six. So what are the don'ts? So don't only include, as I mentioned, a one-dimensional character. Um, don't include photos from the internet, uh, meaning if, if, if you like to travel, uh, if you like to travel and you include a, a picture of Singapore, that's great, but it really is not re personal. So, <laughs> you know, be a little bit more creative and don't be generic. Uh, what you want to do is dynamic presentation of yourself. So show you in action. I'm sure you can, you have, nowadays everyone has a um, smartphone and has, I'm sure, many photos in there. So go through your, 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 um, your photographs and, uh, uh, and try to uh, come up with a presentation of who you are um, from different perspectives. Um, and even if you choose to, you know, use a photograph from, from the internet uh, because you don't have anything that represents Singapore, um, choose, uh, uh, you know, make it, make it your own. Uh, be creative in how you're presenting that image um, and not just a copy paste or not just an insert photograph. Um, and don't be afraid to be vulnerable and to be personable. Uh, that's exactly what they're looking for. NYU looks for individuals who have a, com a combination of hard skills and soft skills um, and are really strong, um, you know, with their EQ. Uh, so when you present your pick six, you want to you want to um, uh, incorporate that character into your um, presentation in those six uh, six slides. Wonderful. I'm just looking if there's any questions. It looks like... Um, 
Anisha, I did not include examples of pick six, um, but we do have an example of the main essay that I will be looking at later. But if you are, th if you think about the pick six, um, uh, look at essentially what your experiences have been. So I've had clients who are um, interested in skiing. Um, uh, another client, which was very interesting, um, was essentially, um, you know, afraid of heights. And he put a photograph of him hanging off the side of a, of a helicopter, which is really interesting components. Obviously, it doesn't need to be that extreme. Um, but you look, think of the personality, think of the things that you do that um, you really like that makes you uh, uniquely you. Um, and then others have um, something more like, you know, cooking for their community, cooking for their family or with their family, learning new recipes. Like it can be something uh, very personal. It doesn't need to be, you know, um, an action movie. <laughs> it can be, it can be very, very, uh, a much more, much more tamed version of that. Um, awesome. So let's continue. Uh, so this is the main essay we're going to talk more about. I'm going to spend a lot more time in this segment so uh, we can go. Um, ah, I see a question here. Um, should the pick six be a, a timeline of your life? Um, so going back to the pick six, uh, no, it does not need to be a timeline. It should be something that really captures um, who you are today or what are the experiences that shape you. I've had clients who in the past have um, volunteered to teach in an orphanage. Um, and when they did that when they were, you know, maybe in their teens, um, and they still continue to do that. So they've shown an image of themselves from, um, you know, when they were teen and themselves now kind of teaching the same in the same classroom. Uh, so it, you can incorporate elements of your past, but it doesn't need to be a timeline of your life. Okay, so does image literally mean a photo of ourselves during uh, certain things to represent each one of the six aspects? Yes, so it can be a photo, it can be an infograph, it can be, um, uh, uh, it shouldn't be a video because you're not gonna be able to um, view a video, um, but it, it can be a representation um, of, uh, you know, you in action. Uh, so sometimes, you know, I've also had a client in the past who put together like a map and showed a, and showed like the, the friends that um, uh, he continuously, uh, he continuously meets um, uh, to, that he's had since childhood and where they are in the world. Um, so you can be really creative in how you present, especially if you don't have a specific photo that illustrates um, the thing you're trying to communicate, use a sort of an infographic to, to do that. So um, be creative on that front. Uh, does the pick six need to include a, um, our photo in each one of them? Um, there should be some photos of you in there. Otherwise, it's a little bit... Um, uh, sort of impersonal. Uh, so you, you can't, you should include a lot, but it doesn't need to be, you don't need to be in the photos. If you can, you should, if you can't, it's okay if it's not, but um, speak to then that one sentence that you include incorporate how you engage uh, or why does this particular photo um, have significant meaning, significant meaning for you. Um, so if you were the photographer taking the photo of some kind of impact you're having in the community, um, you can have a sentence that reads something like, I was the eyes behind the camera looking at the scene for whatever reason it was um, uh, for you. So uh, you can be, like I said, a little bit creative in how you present it, um, uh, but make sure that you are part of it. It's not just a theory or a philosophy that you would like. It's really about you in action because that's what business schools are looking for. Okay. Um, uh, so Aram asks, should all pictures be in, be on one page? No, they should be six slides. So, um, if you use PowerPoint or slides or the version of PowerPoint on Google, um, essentially you're going to, um, create one, six different slides, um, that represent 
six different ideas that you're trying to communicate. Um, so yet, once th this would not be um, um, very, uh, it wouldn't be a lot of space for you to say much in uh, if everything was in one page. Great. Okay, I don't see any new questions. We'll continue with the change, uh, change it essay. Um, so uh, NYU's main essay is this change it um, um, uh, tagline that they're looking for. So they essentially, um, they give you a few options um, uh, as well as creating your own personal tagline. So change it, uh, change, dare it, change, dream it, cha change, drive it, change, empower it, change, manifest it, and then change, fill in the blank. Um, and fill in the blank, choose your own personal tagline that uh, that um, um, resonates with you. Obviously, then you're going to have to, you have two separate questions that um, they're asking of you to respond in this 350 words, which is why does this word resonate with you? And how will you embrace your own personal tagline while at Stern? Two parts to this question. So what you don't want to do is only focus on the future. So only answer the how you're going to embrace this at NYU. So it, it, this is not just about, you know, uh, dream it and then I'm going to dream this particular thing at NYU. It's about um, your past and your future. And definitely do not be vague. Do not be philosophical. Um, business schools, a general rule across the board, general rule is you have to be specific and illustrate any claim that you're making with an example. So um, when you write, when you start writing and crafting this essay, uh, what I encourage you to do is to start thinking about a theme that speaks to your character, that speaks to the thing that motivates you the most. We're going to see an example um, uh, after this, um, and it's really a review of uh, someone who has submitted, uh, who has submitted this, um, uh, their own essay um, uh, that they are considering to submit. Uh, to NYU Stern, um, and we'll see, uh, you know, what are the things that one should be mindful of in real time. Uh, you want to use your past experience to demonstrate your change mindset, and you have to remember whatever your personal tagline is, the constant is change, right? So your constant that you need to think about, whatever the personal tagline, so whether it's dream it, dare it, manifest it, it is supposed to enact a change that is going to take place, right? So there's an action associated with it. And then you're going to want to specifically answer the questions. There are two questions here. Why does this word resonate with you? And how are you going to um, uh, embrace this tagline at NYU? What are you going to do at NYU to enact change? So let's um, look at the essay itself. Um, so uh, I'm going to read through it and I'm going to provide commentary along the way. If the person who has submitted this is here with us, they can start taking notes. Uh, but even the ones that um, are looking or are, are, are uh, listening to this live um, can take insights into uh, what to do and what not to do. Um, I have just added some lines, um, but everything will be filled in um, throughout uh, in our discussion. So um, my 15-year-old self would be proud to see me write this essay. I see this oftentimes when applicants are having a hard time figuring out how to start an essay. Um, that's perfectly okay for a draft that you're just going to keep as your first draft. When it comes to your submission, these lines like this need to be cut out. If it helps you again to get started, that's okay. But if not, um, definitely, um, you know, remove it in here. Uh, perfect. So then the, uh, the applicant continues. Um, it is the same uh, young girl who was anxious about her future um, as a disabled person, the same tenacious teenager who had multiple spinal and orthopedic surgery growing up, but never missed a school year while remaining in top three in her class. And the same ambitious undergraduate who believed in bringing a change in the world around her never stopped trying. 
Um, there is a lot of information that is captured in this as far as the character, as far as the, you know, uh, who you are. Um, however, um, it is not really saying much. So if we go back to what I said earlier, you need an example to, to, to speak to how you have enacted change in the past. Um, change has happened in this presentation, but it's not really giving us um, um, you in action um, in a particular uh, environment towards a particular thing. So I would con consider either removing this or um, if you are if you are really um, tied to the, the character transformation that has taken place over the years, you may want to sprinkle that throughout the essay, but not dedicate this very long sentence um, to um, presenting that um, that arc. Uh, so I would consider for the time being removing this altogether. Um, and then here she is, and here I am. We're moving into this. Um, first person, third person presentation of ourselves. Um, I get that NYU is a creative school. Um, I love my NYU experience because of it. Uh, however, this business school is not really asking you to be creative here. Um, the creativity that you can showcase is in the actions that you've taken and not necessarily in the writing and how you're presenting it. Just be genuine and present your experiences um, but uh, this third person, first person um, uh, change, um, it's definitely not um, uh, not required. And it actually diminishes the quality of the essay um, because the reader is kind of left unsure what is going on, right? So then we continue on. Um, I have a congenital birth condition called spina bifida. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, so I apologize if I'm um, botching that. Uh, when people try to define you by your limitations, you turn your distinguishment into armor. Um, I think we definitely need this backstory of your own, um, you know, uh, 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 condition. Uh, however, uh, the the two sentences between one another, it you have to be mindful of the reader um, reading this. They don't know you. They don't know your experiences, and you need to you know take their hand, walk them through the journey. So we know, hear about this condition, and then we hear about this armor that you need, and this these people who don't believe in you. Um, there's the missing, the middle that's missing in here. Um, we'll talk more a little bit about the overarching theme because um, I think the, the everyone watching needs to kind of go through it first and then think from a macro level perspective. Um, but I would, uh, uh, but you want to be really purposeful in how you're laying out, how you're moving the reader throughout the essay. Uh, one thing that I would say to candidates that are starting the writing process, um, initially just focus on getting your idea across. Um, even if it's above 350 words. Once you have your idea across, uh, you captured what you're trying to communicate, you captured your theme, um, then you can worry about you know, trying to condense it. Because every single time um, we go through, I go through essay development, that's one of the um, uh, major rebuttals. Well, I only have X amount of words. Um, to write my response in. And that's true, but that's the final draft that you have to think about. Initially, if your ideas are not on the page, it's really hard to edit something that is not actually answering the question. Um, and then we go into, this is what I did, which um, we're not exactly sure as a reader, I'm not exactly sure um, what this is ref referring to. I realized that it, that's, that as a differently abled person, I can look at the world differently and come up with multiple creative ways to solve the problem. Um, we haven't been introduced to the problem. Is the problem the people that don't believe in you? What is a solution that you're looking to, um, to, to create for them, for um, uh, you know, the people that, have, that are differently abled? Um, so the problem that you're trying to solve has not been it has not been presented, so you do need to make that presentation. And then from the inspiration around me, um, is the inspiration the fact that 
people see saw you as someone who had limited capabilities? Is the inspiration other people who have this congenital birth condition? We're as a reader, I'm not sure exactly um, what you're referring to. Um, and I got into um, painting and music from a very young age. This is a totally new idea that is brought into the table without any introduction, without any, um, uh, you know, reason for being there. We haven't been we haven't been feeling like we're getting to a point of creativity at this point. So um, the reader does need a walkthrough essentially of what of what this experience was like. It doesn't need to be I did this and then I did this and then I did this, a linear progression, but it does need to, we do need to know what the theme is. We need an example and then we need the actions that you've taken that will lead you to then what actions are you going to be taking at NYU. Um, I became uh, so empathetic. I started volunteering towards um, enhancement of the lives of spinal bifida individuals and, vir and visually challenged across India. Um, I think this is the starting of the example, but the example ends there because I became assertive enough to explore a myriad of possibilities and my uh, disability never stopped me from achieving great things. Um, one component I will strongly encourage applicants going through this writing, it's show, remember to show and not tell. So don't tell me, don't tell the admission committee you're, you achieved great things. Instead, show us the great things you've achieved. Show us by including examples and including the impact those experiences have had in the communities that you're trying to impact. Um, so I think if this volunteering work that you have done uh, led to a specific impact, you would use that as your main character example, uh, uh, main um, personal um, uh, personal model, essentially, um, that, uh, that, that you exemplified in your real life. Um, so this can be where you draw in the next draft of this essay. Um, and all through this, there's one thing that has become my invisible best friend and guardian angel, a simple verb, believe. Um, this uh, interpretation of believe is not, first and foremost, it's not very clear what it means. Is it that you believe that you can do it? You believe that you can change it? You believe, like, what does the believe mean for you? Um, and you have to remember that NYU is asking specifically about change, right? Change, how have you enacted change? Um, so remember to go back to fully understanding what the prompt is and then identifying the example that illustrates how you are responding to the actual um, prompt itself. Um, the essay continues, a belief that all I need is my, uh, is my wheelchair to learn, grow, and find a purpose that not, not only strives for my betterment, but also a more uh, promising world around me. Um, I think in here, I'll continue on. I won't spend much time here, but... Uh, um, it is not clear that we have seen how your wheelchair has been um, your uh, your friend in the journey um, that you have um, have had to date. So adapting and improving became second nature to me, and I had to constantly overcome situations. And it is such a belief I want to spread to the world. Um, uh, again, without an example, this statement becomes more of a theoretical presentation and not so much as actual evidence of you enacting change. I'm sure you have done amazing things, but if I'm to read your essay, um, uh, I don't really get a sense of what uh, your journey has been and what this um, uh, personal tagline, um, how it shows up in your life. Um, and then you continue on is I want to change the idea that profitability and sustainable policies are mutually 
exclusive. Um, I highlighted this because um, one thing I want to point here is that you have 150 words to talk about your aspirations. You do not need to include it here. It's not necessary at all to talk about your personal aspirations um, in this essay. Uh, you can just share the story and then dive into Stern. So in this particular essay, I would actually cut the first two sentences um, entirely and really dive into then how are you going to be um, once you give the example, of course, um, uh, how NYU, so answering the second question, how you're going to embody this personal tagline at NYU. And you want to be specific without including just knowledge, tools, and guidance, because that is so vague, you can get that anywhere. Any one of the schools will be able to give you those things. Um, you want to show how NYU specifically is going to do that. And um, uh, and in here, you know, um, uh, when stick to a theme when you're writing this essay, um, and make sure that you're supporting the theme that you are claiming. Uh, make sure that you're not introducing new things without actually developing them. Right? It's 350 words. Again, it's not a lot. It's better to have depth than breadth. Um, uh, uh, you know, just trying to cover as much of uh, things that you want to cover. Uh, you're not necessary. It's not necessary for you to include that. And again, this is not an, a goals essay. Um, so it really showcase you as an individual who embodies that EQ um, that NYU really looks for um, and make sure that you are capturing again how that personal tagline is going to be, uh, your, how, how your past experiences are gonna be beneficial to the future experience you're gonna have at NYU Stern. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, we are at 31 minute mark. Um, I would, um, if this content was um, helpful to you, give the video a thumbs up. If you have questions, I'm gonna encourage you to ask the questions live. Um, please uh, feel free to write your questions in the chat. Um, and uh, while you write your questions in the chat, one thing I will say about um, um, this main essay, which is you know, the, the, the bigger piece of the NYU application, is that you have to think about who you're, tr who you're looking to um, present um, or, or the character that you're looking to present at NYU. Um, you will not have the space to include multiple examples. So really brainstorm. Um, if you have a coach, brainstorm with your coach. If you have a, 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 a friend, um, a colleague, or anyone who has gone through this process in particular before, um, you want to brainstorm with them um, the possible scenarios that speak to who you are as a um really as a human being, what really motivates you, um, what, uh, what um, achievements have you had, and uh, look at several different examples before you start uh, writing uh, your essay. Once you've identified a few examples, then look at how each example is going to um, uh, be able to be embodied at NYU. So if it's something that NYU won't necessarily be able to support you, um, in, although that's a little bit hard to imagine, um, uh, that example may not be the right example, but also be mindful of the examples you're choosing, because if the example is, you know, I want to create profit, for example, I just have the <laughs> word highlighted here, I want to create profit, um, uh, that may not be something that NYU cares about, I mean, obviously they care as a business school, but it, they're they're really looking for individuals who are looking to make a you know um, social impact through business, um, and not necessarily uh, someone who is just looking at profit profit as a standalone. So, look how the experience that you've had has brought about change in the communities that you are a part of, or in the community that you're trying to target, um, and then look at how you're going to embody that at NYU. So for example, let's go in a different direction here. And um, let's say you really care about financial inclusion. And that's something that you have put a lot of effort in. Um, uh, your, your personal tagline can be, um, you know, change, drive it, or change, empower it. And then you give an example of how you've created financial inclusion opportunities. 
And then you're going to look at how NYU is going to be able to support this personal tagline. Um, look for any not NGOs or, uh, you know, opportunities that are in and around New York City. I mean, this is New York City, so there's very little that you can't find there. So look for um, how you can do that through the NYU community. Um, look at how you can um, encourage and bring about discussion around financial inclusion in your classroom. Uh, so really think about, imagine yourself being a student on campus, um, having access to all the resources that the school offers. And then imagine if you could do anything within the club, within the NGO, within the environment that you're a part of, what would you do in order to enact this change, in order to embody this personal tagline? And then speak to that in your essay. Obviously, it should not be anything that is unattainable. Um, uh, it should be something that you can actually do and something that, um, you know, others have done in the past or similar similarly have done in the past, meaning if you are um, looking for something that to do that no one has ever done uh, for specific reasons, because it's difficult to actually gain access to that particular um, community, that may not be something you pitch at NYU. Um, but look for things that other students even have spoken to you about and shared with you that they have been able to do through the NYU um, community and um, both like uh, on campus at Stern, but also a broader alumni body uh, that were able to help them um, have that kind of impact, have that kind of um, uh, ability to enact the change. Okay, let's see what questions we have. Um, okay, so where can we get examples of the essays? Um, I'm not sure that there is any, like if you know people that have applied and they can, are willing to share an example with you, then you can ask for that. Um, Abhijit, I think I'm going to move screen. So if you don't mind, just stop sharing my presentation. Oh, I actually can do that myself. Sorry. Uh, just so I don't look on the side, I want to look at the comments that are coming in. Uh, yeah, so if you have friends or if you've spoken with alumni or applicants um, that have applied to NYU already and are willing to share their past essays, uh, by all means, um, ask them to do that. Uh, typically, these are very private materials, so we don't share um, uh, at lib on the internet. Who is comfortable, of course, is, willing, is able to share um, as well. Okay, I think I lost track of who, where I was. Okay. Beautiful, Alex, thank you. Awesome. Um, if you have, um, oh wait, I see. Should the change at essay be based on past experiences or future plans at Stern and afterwards? Um, it should be both. So you need the past example to show how you embodied this in the past. Um, because when you think about business schools, they are looking for um, individuals who have a history of success, right? So even in this essay, you have to showcase the history of success and the thing that in your personal tagline. So you need a past experience that showcases you in action, enacting change. Um, and then, so that's, you know, if you have 350 words, um, I would probably do 200 words of that space to describe the example, the actions you've taken and the outcome. And then you need hundred and the remaining 150 words to talk about how you're going to be enacting this change in the future at NYU and even beyond, but they're specifically asking for NYU. So if you have the space to incorporate and beyond, that's fine but it's not necessary. What is necessary is that you show how you're going to do it at NYU with specific examples. Um, so this means you're going to have to do research, um, connect with students, connect with recent alumni who can speak to um, what activities they've been a part of that you can incorporate into your, this essay. Uh, 
And if you guys want to um, discuss um, your own application specifically um, and ways that we can support you at SIA, uh, please feel free to reach out. Is um, uh, If you go to, actually in the comments, there is a link to my page. So it's siaadmissions.com. Um, and you can connect with us, uh, request a consultation. It's free, um, and we discuss your application and the ways that we can support you. Um, beautiful. Uh, so does each slide in the pick six only have one picture, or can we make a collage of similar pictures in one slide to describe? In one sentence in one slide to describe. Uh, okay, yes. So yes, you can have a collage uh, for sure. Um, you can you, you can be creative in how you present that one sort of macro image, uh, which is represented in the slide. And then you have a one sentence describing um, the significance of the slide. Um, and it's all the, the pictures that you've chosen to include. Um, uh, so the admission team can understand what you're trying to communicate by having that collage of images there. Beautiful. Awesome. So I think um, there are no additional questions um, that we have. Um, if there's, if you want to have a conversation again, um, please feel free to reach out. Um, and, uh, you know, the content, if the content was really helpful, as you go through your own essay um, development, uh, please uh, give this video a um, like and um, also uh, feel free to share with um, your community of other individuals who are going through um, the application process. Um, I am a huge believer that we can collectively succeed and there is uh, no limit in the amount of success that we can have. Um, so sharing with others what, um, is, uh, what works, um, what, uh, what has helped others is something that I wholeheartedly believe in. Um, so I encourage you to really continue to share um, uh, content that you find beneficial with other one with other peers who are going through the same journey as you. Thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.